In this video, we're going to talk about decision statements. There's actually three that we're going to consider. Uh, the if, the switch, and a ternary operator. Um, and so whenever we need to add logic to our application, in other words, perform different blocks of code based on some condition that we evaluate, we'll want to use one of these decision statements. And so let's go ahead and start by creating a new file called uh, decisions.js. And here what we'll do is start with the if statement. So the basic structure looks like this. If, and then we'll evaluate something here, some expression. So let me just kind of start off with this. Some expression, that expression should equal true or false. And there's lots of ways to evaluate this. We'll come back to it in just a moment. But we'll consider those in between the opening and closing parentheses. If that is true, whatever that expression is, then we'll execute all the code inside. So uh, let's begin simple var count equals three. We'll just hard code a value and then say, um, so if count, and then we'll use the equality operator. So this is going to evaluate for equality. If count indeed is equal to four, then we will, uh, th that will, that expression will return true. If it's true, then we'll perform whatever code we write here. So uh, console.log, and uh, count is four. So the first time we run this, we're not gonna get really anything. All right, so the first time we run this, we're going to not get anything. It'll just exit. Um, what we can do is change this to count equals three, like so. And now when we run it, we'll see the message count is three. All right, very uninspiring. Let's set this back to four and here we can consider the alternative that the count is not equal to four. And we could kind of give the counter message, count is not four. This much we know to be true, all right? All right, so count is not four. We basically skipped over this block of code because this returned false Therefore, we executed the else statement, this second block of code, and skipped over the first one, okay? So there's actually several different variations of this we can use um, because there are some different conditions here. Uh, maybe I don't wanna jump right to that else statement. Maybe I wanna keep evaluating. I can use an else if. And so here I might say, um, Else, if the count is greater than four, then I could maybe do a message like console.log uh, count is greater than four. And I can do kind of the opposite as well. Else, if count is less than four. So console.log count is uh, less than four. So I changed modalities there. And then at that point, this will never happen ever because one of these three conditions would occur. We'd never get to this final else statement, right? It would just would never happen. So let's go and save our work here and see this run. Count is less than four because it's three. Okay. So that's the general structure of the if statement. It allows us to evaluate one or more expressions if it returns, if that expression returns a true, then we execute the code in the code block associated with that expression. We can create optional else or else if statements to continue to evaluate other expressions. Usually you'll wanna make related ones, but you don't necessarily have to, although that may not make a whole lot of sense, depending on your business rules. And then we can finally use a catch all in case none of the previous else if statements uh, are, are correct and kind of capture that. So let's go ahead and comment that out. That's our first structure and we'll use the if statement a lot. The next type of statement is a switch. It's a little bit more tricky to use. Um, let's start off with uh, just typing out the switch keyword and what we want to evaluate. And so what we'll do is actually evaluate whatever's in this expression against a number of cases. So 
I might, for example, let hero equal Superman. And then, depending on the hero, I might want to print out the, um, the superpowers that that particular hero has. So based on the hero, if that hero, so if the case is Superman, I would say, well, that hero has console.log um, super strength. Uh, may also have x-ray vision. All right, let's add another case here and say case uh, Batman. And notice that kind of the, the format of this to use the case keyword inside of this block that belongs to the switch, the case keyword, the value we want to compare uh, our our case against, and then a semicolon and everything beneath that will become part of the body of that, of that case that gets executed. So in this case, we'll say, what are Batman's superpowers? Um, he has intelligence, And he has uh, fighting skills. All right, and then we can also then say, well, the default for that hero is that um, they're a member of the JLA. Now watch how this works. It works a little bit different than the if and else if. Um, so let's go ahead and save what we have and then rerun this. All right, so in this case, it was Superman. And notice that we matched the case Superman because it prints out super strength and x-ray vision. But then everything else inside of all additional cases, including the default case, will be true as well. So he also is intelligent, he has fighting skills, and he's a member of the JLA. Now, if we were to change this to, let's say, Batman, and we were to run the application, you'll notice that it skips over all of the console log statements that describe Superman superpowers, and they, they come in, however, here at Batman. So console log intelligence and fighting skills, and he's also a member of JLA. Now, we could try somebody like a Green Arrow, not particularly one of my favorite heroes, and... Um, He's just a member of the JLA. All right, now if we don't want that, that flow through style, what we can do is actually use a break statement in here. So let's go back through this now and see what happens whenever we break out of a given case. So back to Superman. And now when we run it, we only see that he has super strength and x-ray vision. Batman. Has intelligent fighting skills and then um, green arrow is just a member of the JLA okay all right one other quick tip here is that whenever you're evaluating strings um, there's a possibility like for example Batman what if we had capital B in Batman all right and then we run the application and you see he's a member of the JLA uh, why didn't it catch the case Batman? Because capital B, Batman, is not the same as lowercase b, Batman, in that string. Now, what we can do to circumvent that, whenever we're working with strings and we want to do some comparison with them, we can use the to lowercase method of our strings. So strings have a built-in method called to lowercase, and that will take whatever that input is and we'll make sure that all the letters are lowercase so that we're really comparing apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. So now when we rerun the application, we get what we would expect with Batman, okay? All right, so let me comment this out. We've looked at the if statement, we've looked at the switch, and then the third one we're gonna look at is the ternary operator. And this is useful whenever I want to, um, I want to just do a quick inline evaluation of some expression and then return back a value, a string, number, boolean, whatever, probably just a string or a number, back 
uh, depending on whether that expression evaluates a true or false. Very small, short, concise, inline uh, statement. So I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to do something a little bit different though. The first variable I'll create like you would normally expect, but instead of ending that line and moving to the next one, I'm going to do another uh, variable creation, uh, variable declaration, and um, assignment right here in the same line. So I'm going to create another variable called b and initialize its value to the string one. All right. So just a slightly different technique. You might see that online. Moving on. Uh, so we're going to create another variable called result, and we'll set that equal to some evaluation of an expression. Does a equal b? So two uh, equal signs that are next to each other is the equality operator. This is a check for equality to say, does A equal B? And if that is true, then what we'll do is return the word equal as a string. But if it's not true, notice the colon that separates the true from the false, we'll return the word inequal. So the ternary operator has kind of got several parts here. There's an expression, there's a question mark that, that has true or false ramifications, and we'll just do a console.log um, and the result, like so. So now let's go ahead and run that, and these are equal. Great. Um, we could also do this in line. So let me just take this part right here and do that instead. And you can see how uh, we can basically perform that same check without having to create a new variable to hold the result. All right, so it's a nice inline way of running a quick check and then returning back a string, one string or another string. Now, let me just go back for a second here. Or actually, let's do this. And then we'll do console.log result. Okay. Let me comment this one out. I want to keep it around for you in case you want to reference that in the future. Um, we used two equal signs, but there's another, another type of equality that we can check for, and that's strict equality. And this will check to make sure that these two values are equal, but then in addition to that, it will not coerce, for example, the number one and the string one. Uh, it'll say, are these absolutely equal, at, even with the same data types, all right? And so in this particular case, we should expect a different result. These are unequal, they are not the same. All right, so these are the same because I'm looking for equality, but if I'm looking at strict equality and I'm not allowing JavaScript to coerce the integer into a string and then check for equality, uh, then I have to say, no, these are not the same because one is a number and one's a string, all right? All right, so let me comment that out and let's take do one more check here. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use a different operator, the not equal to operator. So I'll just use the word not unequal and not, not equal and not unequal, all right? Which would be the same as saying equal. <laughs> all right, so now let's see and run that. And uh, this produces a false. So this would be returned back and then displayed on screen. But then we can also do strict inequality by adding another equal sign to that operator. And these are not equal, again, because it is true that A is not strictly equal to B because they're different data types. All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and stop there. Um, and hopefully all this ternary operator business and, and equality and strict equality makes sense and let's move on. You're doing great. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.